Okay, my phone rang. I brushed my hair, though, but it doesn't look that much better. Anyway, who cares? I'm married. I don't need to impress anybody. Um, so those pilots would tell me, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And then um, I've told this story before, but during the, we had a slowdown at United when the company purchased US Air with the money that was supposed to go to the pilots. So the pilots had taken a, um, um, pay cuts in order to reinvest into the company. And then they were like pilot owned, pilot owned, uh, employee owned. And that was their marketing strategy. And you know, the pilots were all in and they, they worked to make the, that's the best airline, all these people working to make the best airline possible. And then, um, some guys were waiting for their checks and instead of getting checks, we all found out from the cover of the USA today that our airline purchased US Air. Long, big mess. Um, yeah, so that's, it was so unfair for those guys, for those people, but mostly guys, it was like a lot more guys. I don't think women's pilot, female pilots were more than 5% at United. So, um, but we did a slowdown. So what that means is we're not on strike. We're going to work. We're just flying really slow. We're just, <laughs> we're taxiing really slowly. And like, so a normal, say if a normal taxi speed is like this, we were like this. And we would pass, you could see other planes sometimes and you'd both be like this. It was like so funny. Oh, you know what it was like? It was like the GameStop thing now. Wh whenever, so, uh, it's so cool when, when the masses get it that they can, that they're more powerful than the um, elites, you know? And um, they ruined the short stock. They tried to short this stock. And uh, so they, they um, bought um, the rights to sell sell a stock sell sell a st stocks for twenty dollars, thinking that it's going to go to ten dollars, say, and then they can sell ten dollars stock for twenty dollars. Then they make ten dollars off of it. But those those options expire. So this chunk of you know I don't know if it's the Anons. You can't beat the Anons. You cannot beat these people. The Chan boards are full of these people, the Anans. And when they put their mind to something, you cannot beat them. Shia LaBeouf, they decided to make Shia LaBeouf go nuts. And they did it. They stole his, they, they ruined his art installation twice. He had one in New York City. And then I think the other one was in like Arizona. And then he got a flag. They stole, he put the first flag on top of like an art museum in, in England, I think. My stories are the best. I could have these details wrong, but... Well, the overall context is correct. So, so he had this flag flying on top of, I believe it was an art building in England. They stole the flag and they recorded the whole thing. And then he, he was flying the flag with a live stream. He will not divide us. He will not divide us. So then they found his flag in the field and they, again, they, you can't beat them. So now they're doing the stock thing and they, what is it? I forget, 70 billion that they, so when the masses start to realize their power and then, and then if you don't look at the television and you look at what people are posting from their home, from their cell phones, you can see all these, you know, it's like five policemen. I believe it's in France. It's like five policemen and they're just getting nailed with snow from hordes, hordes of, uh, you know, people. It's just like, it's, it's happening, but okay. It's happening. So, the lateral fights are ending. People are starting to come together. Not so much in the United States. Okay, right now, not yet, not yet, but maybe soon, who knows? Maybe not, maybe never. Hard to believe it'd be never though because we are all connected and it's already happened in Hong Kong and in France and Germany. There's these massive, massive protests and the, you know, the, the masses uh, are stopping their lateral fight. So the lateral fight is, slowing right now at least slowing people are coming on the same page and then um the vertical fight which is the masses 
united against the elites, um, that fight will just be over very quickly. Okay. So, but it won't, it won't happen. The vertical fight won't happen if the lateral fight really doesn't kind of stop. Okay. So anyway, it used to bother me, this fight between um, Democrats, Republicans, when I, I've always felt the ridiculousness of it. And then when I found, you know, this, this documentary USA oligarchy that keeps getting taken down, um, it explained where all the wars came from. It made so much sense. Beware the military industrial complex. It's the military industrial complex. And my husband and I were having a talk and he sort of looks more at the, the reality that is portrayed. And I'm like, it might not be like that. And he's like, well, we just do the best we can. Around. I'm like, yeah, okay. But I'm like, you know, how do I want to say this? Um, oh, I know how I want to say it. He says, now that side controls the military. And I said, but maybe not. We don't know that. We really don't know what it's like. Because the military, if they know that they're just going to be, the military industrial complex is going to be churned up again and, um, you know, sent overseas and they're just going to lose their brothers and sisters in the military. You know, I love listening to um, Tulsi Gabbard speak. Like she's, she's got like perfect energy. I feel like she's, well, okay. Anyway, whatever, who cares? The whole point that we don't know, like the military this time, if they're sent to Syria to to create or cause some kind of drama, we don't know if they're really going to do that. And if you remember the in Braveheart, there was a scene in the movie where you had the Braveheart troops and then you had these other troops that were in front, you know, and they they ran towards each other. And then when they got together, they were like hugging and laughing and stuff. So these people... They were being used, you know, by the, by the, I think it's the British. Okay. These were their soldiers, but their soldiers were on these people's sides. So they ran at each other and they're like, hey, hogging and stuff like that. And so you don't know. We don't know. There could be something going on with our military where they're like, decide that they aren't going to be used for globalist wars anymore. We don't know. You know, it could happen. Anyway, I'm not attached to it. Whatever it is, it is. And I'm here now. And um, so today, today, it doesn't, the fight doesn't bother me anymore. So I'm not trying to stop the fight. So I'm not using my energy now to try not to be seen as a Democrat to Republicans and try not to be seen as a Republican to Democrats. Try not to be seen as a liberal to conservatives and try not to be seen as a conservative to liberals. That's what I was doing. That's what I've been doing since I started this channel, since I started my Renegade Yogi page. I've been trying not to be seen as the opposite side. I have been <laughs> allowing my ego to say, you should just shut up. You should just pack it up. No one's going to understand. You're just not going to understand. See, see, you got yelled at. See, see, you got hacked at. See, I told you. Just be a stay at home mom. Just blah, 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 blah. You know, that's what I have been doing. I've been so afraid to be seen as something that I think I'm not, you know, or res resisting. Because I'm both. I'm both. I'm, I'm everything all at once. There's nothing I'm not. I teach in my group. It's like, I am. You know, they say, I am the I am. I am. Anything you put in the blank as if it's a blank is going to diminish what you are. So, oh, um, all right. So back to, all right. It's so freaking cool. So I realized yesterday that I have this attachment to my Renegade Yogi group. And I don't want to lose anybody. And in trying not to lose anyone... I'm not taking the people who are available for what I feel and what I know and, and what I am that I, my soul came here to teach this crap, even though, even though my little ego doesn't want to talk. I don't want to do this. 
you know, if I say I don't want to do, if I say I don't want to do this, I don't want to make videos, I don't want to talk, I don't want to, that's my identification with my ego. Because my ego hates this so much, hates this Ooh, so much. <sighs> Stress out right now. My belly is like, <laughs> okay. My soul's like, fuck it. Just fucking do it. Just try and explain. Just start somewhere. Just start somewhere. So I started. Renegade Yogi. They gave me bless, forgive, respect, free will, choice, love all. Okay? It can't be any easier. These are the principles. Just teach this. Teach teach this. Stick with this. Um, here's some Bruce Lipton stuff. Here's some Thich Nhat Hanh stuff. Here's some this. Here's some Bible stuff. Here's some of this stuff. Just stuff. All just information. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, here's some healing clients to help you. For, and here's some dead people to, you know, talk into your healing clients through you. You know, here's some more shit. What do you need? What do you need? Just tell me what you need. I need a way to, <laughs> I need a way to tell this information, tell these stories without triggering people. Yeah, no, that's, no. <laughs> you just have to choose empowered thinking. And then when people get triggered, you allow them to get triggered. Okay, so here's what happened, though, I think. Here's what I feel happened. I, I feel like the people who were going to get triggered have been triggered. And they're off the page or they're out of the page. I could be wrong, but it feels like everyone that is left, for, or most of the people that are left, are available for this higher vibrational reality. And they know. It's like none of this shit's personal. You know? You know... Be impeccable with the word because your word creates. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. Be skeptical, but learn to listen. Practice the renegade yogi principles. You know, even all these things, whether it's the five agreements or the renegade yogi principles, these are all just life rafts. These are all just tools to use. You know, you use them when you need them. You use them when you find yourself in lower vibration. But as soon as you pass up into 600 piece, you don't need them anymore. So the higher your vibration, the less you need these tools. You only need these tools to find your way out of a lower vibration. So whether it's a spouse or a parent or a child or some other, you know, soul playing some role in your life, that's what I call a brown, you know, they're, they're not, uh, they're normie. Okay, they're, they're normies or whatever. It doesn't mean you can't, but you, it doesn't mean you can't achieve the soul growth that you want. It just means that your soul decided to take on a larger challenge. So I'm lucky. Listen, I know I'm lucky, but my soul set this up for me. So I'm not lucky. I'm just moving through the adventure that my soul created for me. So if you have some kind of a normie in your life, any egoic story that says, I would be so far or I, it would be so much easier if they would just buy into my reality. you got to remember that they're not available for it. People who exist in lower vibrations don't feel sorry for them, but they, they don't have an awareness or an ability. Um, you know, the lower vibrational people in like fear and stuff, they think you're crazy if you have a high vibration. They did it to Martin Luther King. You know, do you think Martin Luther King Jr.'s family wanted him to put himself out there like that? I'm sure not. You know, they wanted him to just be safe, be safe, just be safe, just be safe, just be safe. Cling to life, don't live, cling to life, don't live. But there's something inside these people that drives them, right? Now, <laughs> it's so funny because like the stuff that I have to teach is about zooming out, zooming in, blah, blah, blah. It's so easy to zoom out for me and just go, none of this matters. The fight doesn't matter. Republican Democrat doesn't matter. This is all identification with, you know, meat suit details, or it's just identification with mindset or, you know, ways of thinking and then and boring in and saying, this is me, this is me. <laughs> like, so I just zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Well, over the summer, um, some stuff was going down and I'm like, what do you want? You know, what do you want? It's like, okay, you're allowed to teach zooming out zooming in but you're not allowed to stay zoomed out all the time or you're not going to be effective in the path you came to teach it you can't just keep yourself zoomed out all the time and go 
yeah, you guys are on your fucking own. You're not going to get it. I don't, no one's going to get it. They're not going to get it. It's like, no, you've got to zoom in to teach it. And then we'll let you zoom out here and there. It's like, okay, all right. Anyway, my ego hates this, hates it. You know, and then I get these nice cards. People send me cards. They send me nice texts. I got a present delivered right to my porch. Like, that's so cool, right? So my ego's like, okay, this isn't so bad. Glitter bath bombs, <laughs> you know, um, unicorn poop lip gloss. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not so bad. We're getting presents now. <laughs> anyway, back to my, my post. This is all, it's all just a fun game. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to go back a little bit. Okay. So by doing the work, you make it easy. You're still living in the world, but you're not identifying as being of the world. You play at life and chores by allowing the peaceful, powerful spirit to direct your life Watching as ego gives its input, you move in and out of expanded consciousness, up and down on the vibrational scale. Nothing is good or bad. It just is. This is a life well lived. It is your painting, your individual self-expression, the self being your divine spark of eternal consciousness, playing in the world with all other divine sparks of eternal consciousness who are also in the world, but not of it. But some of them do not know this or have any availability to this awareness but they are still okay. When you zoom out far enough, none of this matters anyway. So enjoy the game, no matter how zoomed in or out you go. So I used to just, I was happy zoomed out and unhappy zoomed in. So I was very happy talking to dead people and angels and meditating myself. To, I can meditate myself to being high. I did a video called Clown World, you can see it. <laughs> so I can zoom out, way out and be super happy. And then when I was forced to zoom in to do work or whatever, I was like, <clears throat> I don't want to be taken the wrong way, <clears throat> you know? Okay, whatever. Not taking that stuff for granted. It's so hard for me to explain, but it's like life is balanced. Life is balanced between work that lights you up and the rest required to keep the physical body in optimal condition in order to keep going and get the mileage out of that beautiful meat suit. So the more mileage I get out of my meat suit, the more work my soul can do. So it's working, lighting me up. My work lights me up as I serve others, I serve myself. And then the rest of my time, so time, energy, money, rest of my time is resting, relaxing, going to breakfast with close friends, going to Vermont with close friends or whatever, receiving healing, aroma touch from Nicole, whatever it is. So it's work, rest, it's a balance. My life is balanced. Okay, and my life is balanced. I get the most mileage out of the beautiful meat suit. I swear it does not matter what is happening now. Peace 600 is available to you as long as that is your focus and your priority. If you do that, the law of attraction must respond with more opportunities for peace because you are a vibrational match for peace. Isn't this so cool? What is happening now, whether it's inside yourself or outside yourself, it is in both places, but you will see it more in one than the other. It is just information to let you know what you are a vibrational match for. Discomfort pulls you toward, discomfort pulls you forward to change if you let it. Okay, so people with an empowerment mindset, they're, they're uncomfortable. Ah, uh, they ask their heart sincere question. How can I make this better? How can I feel better? this discomfort, then they ask their heart, guide me, guide me, guide me. They ask their heart, their higher self through their int intuitive heart to keep their mind clean and clear, calm and relaxed. So you stay calm and relaxed. You stay in the center of your vortex. You stay, you know, um, grounded to mother earth and grounded to heaven. I stay in the center of my vortex. What I, what, uh, my law of attraction, what I desire raises my vibration and whatever lowers my vibration, it's just contrast, nothing good or bad. This raises my vibration, it's desire, this lowers my vibration, it's contrast. Create more of what raises, create less of what lowers. Now, if I find myself in a place, oh, I have to go blah, 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 it's going to lower my vibration. Wah, wah. You don't have to be Debbie Downer. You just say, okay, I have to go to that freaking uh, bridal shower. 
and play those stupid games with the freaking, um, you know, whatever. Oh, God. Flashback, flashback, flashback. Okay, that's going to lower my vibration. Well, what can I do? I can use the experience as work. I can watch in my body what happens. I can witness, I can witness when my vibration goes down and I can witness what is my ego telling me. What stories is my ego telling me? That I even have to go is a story. You don't have to go, you know, but your ego, I have to go. It's my compliment. I have to go. It's my, uh, uh. I have to go. I have, that's a story. Now, if you buy into that story and you say, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to get in alignment with the story that I'm going to this thing I don't want to go to or doing this thing I don't want to do. If I become, uh, if I decide to step forward into that, then I'm kicking the can down the road. Possibly it'll be more fun than I realized. Blah, blah, blah. So I talk myself. So there's all these stories happening. Okay. But there's still vibration and there's still soul reality egoic reality and the ego is going to say story 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 now if i live a spirit directed life i put my spirit in charge i can witness my egoic confusion uh, frustration um anxiety whatever if i witness my ego then i'm not identifying with my ego so i big i spirit mind i witness oh, that's what my ego's doing He's all stressed out. He doesn't want to be seen as a Republican to Democrats. There's Democrats, Republicans. He's all worried that people aren't going to understand. And he just wants me to lot. Okay, so if I'm witnessing my ego, then I'm not identifying as my ego. If I have anxiety or I'm stressed out, I'm identifying with my ego. If I'm mad or if I'm this or I'm that, if I, I can stay in a spirit-directed reality... My spirit can keep directing me in spirit-directed life. I may feel anger as information in my intuitive heart. My intuitive heart gives me anger. <clears throat> I feel my healing feeling of anger to learn holistic benefit of a boundary defense. Whatever it is, push it away further, you know, right? Instead of wallowing in, be betrayal resulting in, in in the emotional block of blame. I got that from HLC, Hugh Del Conzo's, uh, HLC's um, spiritual life coach training. It's page 56. <laughs> the feelings chart. Feel to release. Feel to release. So if I allow my spirit to direct me in a spirit-directed life, I feel anger, I get the benefit, the holistic benefit. It's just my higher self telling me, put a thicker boundary here. This is crap. You know, just being a spiritual person, you're allowed to say, that's fucking bullshit. That is fucking bullshit. I am not taking on that. Rhymes with bass biting. Rhymes with smash fighting. Fiery, peaceful, fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. I'm not buying that. Oh, we shouldn't be allowing, you know, breastfeeding to be natural. It sets us up for all kinds of stuff. Then people won't, um, people won't want to eat GMOs anymore. People, people won't want to take these other things that go in their body people will want to try and stay natural oh my god that's setting us up oh civilization's gonna fall like the civilization that got us here like people lived a long time ago before any of the shit to get us here you're a descendant of some people who didn't put shit in their body you're a descendant we're all descendants of people who lived natural lives and now we're getting cautioned against it. It's like everything's going to fall. How, how would it fall apart if that's where we came from? We came from a natural world, doing things naturally. And now we're here. And you want to, okay. You know, some people are going to buy into that. Some people, my family, a, a lot of people in my family trust Rachel Maddow more than me. They do, I swear to God. They think my mind is full of crap. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. I, I didn't even get angry. You know, I didn't get angry at it. It just made it like, okay, well, this isn't working for me anymore. This, you know, it lowers my vibration too much so you can outgrow relationships. They can actually be like, this isn't worth my time, energy, and money anymore. 
I have time, I have a certain amount of time, energy, and money on the planet as me, and I've got at least 20 women that would take the same, that if I use the same time, energy, or money that I use for this person who thinks my mind is full of crap, if I use that same, those same resources towards my 20 women, they're like, oh, thank you. Oh my God, you helped me so much. So what would you choose? It's all choices. I can choose to be a victim of a relative who thinks my mind is full of crap, or I can use the same resources to empower myself as I empower other people. I mean, it's pretty obvious what to do. I don't hate, there's no, it's not hatred. I just love from here. Bless, forgive, respect, free will choice. Let me take, you know, I'm not taking any resources back because that was a learning experience, 50 years. 50 year learning experience, da, 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 da. And if that person grows and becomes a better use of my time, energy, or money, then they can come back. But at this moment in time, at this very moment in time, that's a waste of my resources. Okay, I just remove that hose of energy going there and I plug it back in to myself. What do you want me to do with it? Okay, I've, I've, I put it into my group or I put it into myself, you know, or I put it into my kids, wherever I'm guided to put it in. It's now, now it feeds me. Your resources of time, energy, and money work together. I use time and energy to make money. Okay, I use time and energy to make money. I use money. I use time and money to create energy by going on vacation. I use money and energy so I can research a dishwasher to make time. So I can just throw the dishes in the dishwasher, push a button, and now I don't have to wash everything by hand. So time, energy, money. I'm just managing my resources better so I have more time in the meat suit. All right. Okay, discomfort pulls you forward to change if you let it. So it's not people say, oh, I'm never happy. I'm never happy. But, but you keep making choices, empowered choices to move you forward. So your life keeps improving. You keep becoming a better and better manager with your resources of time, energy, money. It's not that you're never happy. It's that your soul is pulling you into a, a more high vibrational future. And if you let it and you don't let your ego go, we're always falling back. We're always, there's no backwards. There's never a backwards. Uh, if you quit drinking for 364 days, and so if you think you have a drinking problem and you quit drinking for 364 days and you drink again on the 365th day, you didn't go back to drinking. That There's no back. You lived 364 days without drinking. Now you know you can do that. Okay, but on the 365th day, you didn't go back to where you were 366 days ago. That's impossible. You're a totally different person now. Now you've changed your behavior and it's given you a specific result. So maybe, maybe you were afraid of being an alcoholic before, okay? Then you quit drinking and maybe towards the end of the quitting of drinking, you became afraid of something, right? So even if you start drinking again, you have a new level of awareness. Oh, so, so it's so hard to explain. It's so hard to explain what's in my head, but I don't care anymore about triggering. You know, notice uh, if you read in my book, I didn't say I don't mind. I still am second level. I don't care. That's where I am, you know? And if I keep doing this and it keeps paying off, then I'll move into, I don't mind. I don't mind triggering people. I'm not there yet. I would like to be there for the people who understand me. I would like to be there for my 20 women, but I'm not there yet. I still, <laughs> I'm still in the second stage of, I don't care, but at least I'm not in, I do care. The first stage is I do care. And I let this fear, um, keep me at bay. I let this fear control what I do in the world. I'm less of what I am because of this fear controlling me. I don't want to be seen as a Republican to Democrats or a Democrat to Republicans. I don't want that because I care. 
I care. Now, at least I don't care. So I'm in the second stage. I don't care. And now to move myself to the third phase of I don't mind. All I have to do, all you guys have to do is keep giving me presents. <laughs> Just keep leaving me presents and sending me cards and letters about how much you love me. And we'll just keep on going. I mean, there is some truth to that, right? Of course. But <laughs> in order to get to I don't mind, okay, I just have to keep go doing the work. I just have to keep practicing. And then once I get to I don't mind, then I set my sights on I allow. And then once I can get to I allow whatever I say to trigger people's egos. I'm not triggering the person. I'm just triggering their, the person's ego. And then whatever story their ego is telling them is making them mad at me because they're in identification with the ego. So they get mad at me. They think I triggered them. That's not the truth. What happened is that, Grady, are you supposed to be on school? <laughs> uh, I say something or I try to teach something or I teach something, okay? It hits their ego. Okay, great, thanks. It hits their ego. Their ego puts them in some kind of a victim mindset, whether they're a victim or someone else is a victim. Like white uh, white privilege, you need to uh, something your privilege. I can't remember right now, but you know what I'm talking about. It's just totally irrelevant because it's just an egoic victimhood story, victim consciousness. And it was projected, it was put out it was some shit thrown into the trough for people to eat. Here, chew on this. White privilege. Here, here's another way to feel bad about yourself. Here's another thing to program your mind with bullshit so that you actually create more hell that you think you're fighting. Here, more shit for the trough. Here's more shit for the trough. Eat it up and then go signal the virtues. Go signal the virtues. That's what's happening, okay? The people who are eating the swill in the troughs are lower vibrational people. They're just lower vibrational people. They're just normies. We love them, bless them, forgive them, respect their free will choices to eat the shit that's being put into the troughs <laughs> by CNN or anybody, you know, anyone. And not everybody's putting shit in the trough on purpose. Some people think it's really good stuff. They're just an identification with their ego too. Here's how you, here's how you show you're a good person. Post a black square. Stay off social media. That's not coming together, you know. But it is to the ego. Oh, the women's march. Hate has no home here. It feels so. Um, we're coming together. It's shared hatred, and and so that's all. if it, if you're involved in shared hatred, it's your ego, you know. So whatever. It's all, it's all just a show, not a shit show. It's all a perfect show. It's a perfect, perfect show. The ego resists what's happening now because it's writing scripts continually. It's constantly writing scripts for other people to follow. <laughs> oh, that thing Mara. So Mara again came through with this thing. I, so I went into live stream this morning and I'm not going to have it exactly right, but it says fear, uh, fearful people serve themselves by mastering the world. Fearless people seek to serve the world by mastering themselves. That's freaking awesome. Fearful people serve themselves by mastering the world and fearless people seek to serve the world by mastering themselves. I mean, come on. Like what the, if whoever came up with that, like that's all they needed to do. Like, I think you just completed your soul um, journey right there. Click. You made a meme. It says that with the, there's a lion on one side and I don't know what the other. One. Okay, you're done. <laughs> Enjoy the fruits of your labor. All right. All right. So discomfort pulls you forward to, to change. If you let it, I'm posting the article below. If you want to read it, you can practice with it, holding your peace or at least enjoying the ridiculousness of it all. Do not feel sorry for the normies that buy into being scared away from their intuition and natural guidance. And they go, natural, natural, natural. See how good that feels when you say it and think it? 
They are trying to scare us away from the divine design of this human being. Hearts and minds, man, we have a vagus nerve. The vagus nerve connects you to all others. When you see people suffer, you want to help. But you cannot climb into somebody else's boat to, to drive it around for them. You have to stay in your own boat. And you can move your boat next to their boat. And you can say, I'm here for you. But you have to keep your own vibration high. Your own peaceful, powerful vibration. You put your own oxygen mask before helping others. You never climb into their boat. Okay? It disempowers them and it enables them. And then they're just going to keep on sucking you dry. Sucking and sucking and sucking. Help me now. Help me now. Help me now. And you're like, oh my God, I've helped you a hundred times. I do all this free shit that's out there. Just... Just do all the free shit. Maybe you missed something. Watch all the videos again. Do all the meditations again. Uh, you know what I mean? Fuck. Okay. Natural, natural, natural. Don't get mad or worried. You will be ineffective. It's all a hilarious shit show. All right. So I did write that. AFGO. Another growth opportunity. Allow it to move you further into the higher vibrations. He said, God, I love you guys. You make me so less scared to be real. I just love the crap out of you all today. I'm so grateful, 900 for this group and for all those that have left it. So I'm not just grateful for the hundreds of people that are in my group. I'm also grateful for the people who left the group. They got off the free raft. They, they got off the Renegade Yogi raft. All the people that got off the Renegade Yogi raft, this free resource that I'm guided to do. I appreciate those people getting out and taking their lower vibrations with them. How cool is that? Like there's nothing left out, you know, flood the world with light, leave nothing and no one out. It's all perfect. Everything's perfect. Whew. I need to say that. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Don't get what's happening now in the external world reality that looks like fighting i'm not saying it's not fighting what if it has to happen what if it has to happen exactly the way it's happening what if that's true if you don't know then you might as well let that be true well, my son found um bob ross you know on netflix He's like, this guy's great. I'm like, yeah, he is. He kept watching. He goes, is he still alive, mom? I said, no, hon. No. And he said, oh. And he kept watching Bob Ross, happy little trees and happy little everything, talking about the squirrels that he's like taking care of. And so my son goes, did he at least die in his sleep, mom? I said, I don't know. I said, would that make it be better? Would that make it better for you? He goes, yeah, it would. I said, then let's, let's say that he did. Yeah. Think in your mind, Bob Ross died in his sleep. He, he had an amazing dream. He was in one of his most favorite paintings, climbing happy little trees and watching the sunset or sunrise, whichever one was his favorite. Bob Ross passed away in his sleep and he had the most magical and amazing passing. And after he got to heaven, he was like, I lived my life perfectly according to the adventure that my soul created for me. Holy mackerel. My experience as Bob Ross on the physical plane of existence could not have been more perfect. You know what I mean? Why not? Why not think that? Makes you feel better. Same thing. All right. Then I, I did another. I posted um, a chunk I choose to live a high vibrational spirit directed life. All relationships support the growth of my eternal, peaceful, powerful soul. If that's not true, who cares? Let it be true. I choose to live a high vibrational spirit directed life. All relationships support the growth of my eternal, peaceful, powerful soul. Why not? Think it, create it. Law of attraction will get involved and it'll be like, yeah, it's just going to keep making it true. Give the law of attraction something positive to work with. You know, you're creating whether you want to or not. You're If you're in a low vibration, you're afraid, you're going to create more shit to be afraid of. You know, the cases, 
this is the thing, I said this a long time ago. I'm like, if there are more cases, the, the higher number the cases compared to the lower number of deaths of anything makes the survival rate higher, okay? So if there's only a few cases and there's this many deaths, that's a, that's a very low survival rate. But if there's like tons and tons and tons of cases, tons, like more than you ever knew, okay, of something, and there's still the same amount of deaths, that makes the survival rate almost zero. Okay, we're looking at a 0.01% for something, survival rate. And if you look around and you see how some people live their lives just by looking at what their bodies look like, do they look healthy? Do they look like they would survive anything? Do they? You know, some of the people driving little carts in Walmart, you know, do those people look like they're just, you know, healthy enough to survive something? <laughs> I mean, I'm not making light of anything. It, it is all real on some level, but there sure is a lot of fiery, but mostly peaceful protests going on too. All right. So I took that from the larger post and I said, this wouldn't fit. Everything's happening for me, empowered thinking, not to me, which is victim consciousness. The people that have had to leave this group all have one thing in common that I would never be able to point out without enraging their ego, which they identify with while trying not to. So there have been all these people in this free resource of Renegade Yogi, this raft, you know, this life raft this free resource to raise your vibration to live a higher vibrational existence, it has been available for years, okay? There were people on the raft trying to understand, trying, they were getting something out of the meditations, they were getting something out of that. And then as soon as their ego got triggered, then they tried to help me become a better free resource for them instead of handling their own triggers or finding someone else or finding a different free resource instead of allowing me to just be what I what I am what my soul's pulling me towards so I've had to not care okay before I allow I have to first not care about these people that are trying to help me become a better free resource for them fine that I bless them I forgive them I respect their free will choices and I love them there's actually nothing to forgive when I'm in my lower vibration there's shit to forgive when I'm in my higher vibration, there's nothing to even forgive. There, there, there's just me blessing and me loving and me respecting their free will choice to do whatever they're doing. The higher my vibration is, the more I can just silence is the best response to nonsense. I don't have to write back, I'm sorry you feel that way. I do feel like I have to write that when I'm in my lower vibration. But when I'm in my higher vibration, Silence is the best response to nonsense. I'm not like, see ya. You know, I'm just like, <laughs> like <clears throat> managing my time, energy, and money better. You know, if someone's walking away from me or sending me a parting shot on the way out the door, what is writing back going to do? You know, what's that about? Am I sorry? Yeah, my ego is. My ego doesn't want to lose anybody. It doesn't want to lose anyone. It feels like so bad when, oh my God, oh, I'm so sorry. It's like, are you sorry? Or did you just do what you were guided to do? And that's just what happened. This is just what's happening now. All right. So all the people that have left my group have one thing in common that I'd never be able to point out without enraging their ego, which they identify with while trying not to. So they're understanding me saying big eye spirit mind, little eye ego mind. They're understanding empowered thinking, victim mindset. They're understanding every second you choose between victim mindset or empowered thoughts. They get it, right? But then they get their own ego triggers them. They blame me because I didn't do it right. You know, I didn't say it right. I should have said it like this. I'm like, how am I, as me, with all my experiences, how am I supposed to think like you and talk like you and use the words that you would use because you have different assigned meanings. How am I supposed to do that? Number one. Number two, 
I'm thinking this shit that's coming out of me is from my lived experience. So of course the words and the way I say it is not going to be like you because you didn't start this. Doesn't it? I mean, it's just like fucking common sense. Anyway, it's, like, it's all funny. You know what I mean? It's all hilarious. Now, I used to be very snarky, cynical, sarcastic. Well, no, I still am. I still am. I just am enjoying. I'm not identifying with those. I'm enjoying those characteristics of me. It's funny now. But how did that come to be? I mean, I still was when I was like, oh, I wish, I wish they wouldn't say this about the liberals. Oh, I wish they wouldn't say this about the conservatives. Oh, I wish they'd stop. I wish they'd stop. <laughs> it's like, now I'm like, you know what? Have at it. You know, liberals can, can look at conservatives like they're greedy motherfuckers and conservatives can look at liberals like it's a mental disorder, right? I'm just going to allow that. I just allow it. I'm not going to use any of my resources, no time, energy, and money to try and change that. I'm just going to love them all. It's so much easier blessing them all, forgiving them all, respecting their free will choices and loving them all. And then if one of them tries to pull, if, and if anyone tries to pull me into their reality, I just say, I'm not available for that reality. And they go, oh, okay. You know, most of the time they just go, all right. <laughs> and then the people that don't allow me to walk away from their reality or dismiss their reality, those are the people who are getting triggered by their own egos and blaming me. Okay. Fuck it. Right? Fuck it. I have so many books to write. I really do. And I want to do it from a brand new Airstream. I really do. So I'll be honest, I'm about 50% doing what I'm doing. 50% uh, doing what I'm doing just for an Airstream right now. But as I move forward, you know, it used to be like 100%. I was doing 100%. So the, the Airstream is the carrot on the stick for me. So I was about 100, then ate about 80% and 75%. So I'm about 50%. So that's still forward movement. Anyway. All right. All right. Um, people that have had to leave one thing in common uh, they're identifying with their ego while trying not to they all have victim consciousness happening okay you always every second choose between victimhood or empowerment that is why Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X were both successful and effective leaders in not only their community I don't like that whole thing but it, it does make the point like black community white community it's like it acts like, you know, all these people, you know, what's his name? Young Ripa is this black guy and he's a YouTuber. He says, I have more in common with the other white people who live in Texas with me than I do black people who live in like New York City or something like that. And, it, and I say too, I have more in common with the 70 year old black grandmother that I waited in line with for the bathroom in a random, um, like, gas station in, in Maryland on our way to North Carolina than I do with any of the 50 year old white women who have children in my town. You could take any 50 year old woman that looks a lot like me, two kids, you know, in my town. They're probably nothing like me, but this black lady, grandmother, 14 grandkids, loves her kids, loves Jesus. She and I have more in common. I would have spent the day with this lady. We would have spent the day talking about how, that, you know, what we love about our lives and like sharing she would have shared her grandchildren i would have shared my children she would have we would have talked about jesus a little here and there but i have more in common with this 70 year old grandmother black grandmother totally random met in a waiting in line at the bathroom it's it's like hilarious okay so community back to community okay Oh, you always choose between victimhood or empowerment. That's why Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X are both successful and effective leaders in not only their community, but in the world at large. Their skin color, the experience that their soul created for their great adventure of that, the meat suit details, their own spark of divinity looked at the world prior to incarnating, decided what it wanted to affect on the world, what change it wanted to make. Not fight against victim, but fight for empowerment. And then they, as human beings, just had to bravely, courageously walk through that grand adventure. It's all good. It's all beautiful. It's all cool. You know, 
Martin Luther King and Malcolm X had to be black. Their soul had to choose that for a meat suit detail. They had to be men. Now, you could disagree with me, but I'm not available for disagreement because I'm not saying I know. I'm saying their soul, the higher self of them chose those meat suit details. And if some low vibrational normie wants to come fight me and say they could have been women. No, they couldn't. Some other black woman <laughs> had a spark of divinity. Their soul chose that. That's what they had to do. Who the hell is any low vibrational normie to try and come between someone's higher self and the person? Like, that's just not an available, I'm, I'm just not available for that reality. It's nonsense. It's uh, preposterous. It's preposterous. So anyway, I'm going to finish this video now and let you know I have videos that are not uploading. So one is A Course in Miracles from the 28th. It's not going anywhere. And one is called Seven Billion Hands Up. <laughs> so I love you. Thanks for listening all this time. I hope you're enjoying your life and living it as this grand adventure that it is. And um, I guess I don't mind. I'm going to set this as a reality. I don't mind that some people think I'm crazy. Because those of you that think that I'm not crazy <laughs> are worth every single speck of all of my resources. So I love you. Have a great day. And I'll see you later. Thanks. Peace. See ya.